Currently, on 2B2T, there is a massive change coming above spawn. For years, many players and groups have been placing obsidian spawn logos in the sky. This is mainly due to their permanence, and is a great way to promote their groups. But what if somebody or something alters this? Today in this video, you will be learning about how 2B2T Sky is changing, and how you can help as well. The story begins on November 10th, 2021. After I was viewing the 2B2T subreddit, there were countless memes of Obsidian Sky logos above spawn. It got me thinking, what would happen if someone filled a huge Obsidian platform that got rid of all the Obsidian logos, which would begin the research for this project. In order to fill all Obsidian logos, the Obsidian platform had to be 10,000 by 10,000 blocks, which would equate to 100 million Obsidian. Obsidian would obviously be needed in large quantities for this project, so I messaged Redstoner2B2T, a player who has discovered numerous dupes and exploits. When I asked him if he knew anyone who had a lot of obsidian, he had 300 double chests full of obsidian. After explaining to him what my idea was, he agreed to help supply when everything was set up. In order for this project to work, I would need to either utilize bots or gather a massive amount of players. If I could set up bots, it would have to be done similar to how the spawn masons constructed their enormous logo over spawn. They used 32 bots to place obsidian for their project, and they were able to finish it in 8 days. I would first start my research on bots, and eventually stumbled upon a program called OQ Mindbot. This program is mainly used on faction servers. It allows a player to use bots that can AFK farm, help assist in battle, mine out regions, and much more. If I could figure out how to customize this plugin for 2B2T, it would be enough for this project. However, since I lack any coding experience, I would need to find a programmer. When I tried contacting some programmers, none of them ever replied, putting a halt to the project. Eventually, on July 9th, 2022, I would get a message on Discord. Wazy Vibes, an old friend from 2019, messaged me to let me know he had returned. In 2019, Wazy allowed me to join Conquest, which was my first group on the server. We would create spawn events, create bases, and grief dupe stashes. Eventually, Wazy disappeared, and Conquest slowly went inactive. After reminiscing about the past, Wazy and I discussed reviving Conquest and including a spawn project as part of it. As a new Conquest Discord was made, and players from 2019 came back to join the group, I would message Redstoner to see if he still had obsidian. Fortunately, he did, and agreed to give us all the obsidian as long as we advertised his shop, Shulker Road. Instead of just obsidian though, he would give us ender chests. Since an ender chest gives you 8 obsidian when it's destroyed, it's far more effective and time efficient. A few days later, Redstoner found a location to deliver the first batch. He would load a pearl, drop shulkers of ender chests, die, and then repeat the process. This will mark the start of the project. But we had a few problems. How could we place the obsidian in mine ender chests efficiently? And where should the region start? We would follow in the footsteps of other spawn projects. Linked Horizon had modules that would allow them to place obsidian in a row and without user input. This module was in Lambda Client, a utility mod made for Anarchy servers. Inside the client was a module called Highway Tools. This module was used to create obsidian highways while AFK. To figure out the best settings for placing an obsidian roof, I would first test the module in single player, and when I tried it on 2B2T, it worked. But then there was a problem with mining ender chests. How could we mine them efficiently? To our luck, Lambda had a solution for it as well. A player can automatically mine ender chests and convert them into obsidian using the module Auto Obsidian. Our last problem was the region. If the obsidian was 10,000 by 10,000 blocks, it would directly start on the massive Spawn Masons logo. Players from the Spawn Masons, as well as the groups that made the smaller logos, would likely want to stop us if they discovered we were completely filling in their logos. There was no way to avoid this, so all we could do was keep an eye out. Now that these issues were addressed, I would add a project information section to the Discord, transfer ender chests near Spawn, and start recruiting players. But then, something unexpected happened. During the planning of our project, another group was constructing their spawn project in secret. 
The player's Oofplux and Dino underscore 2B2T were focused on removing and defacing all Obsidian logos at 2B2T spawn. The purpose of this project was inspired by the idea that due to their permanence, Obsidian logos are utilized in advertising. Obsidian logos appeal would logically decline if their permanency were removed, and the simplest method to accomplish this would be to just remove the logos. Oofplex would create a private Discord server and ask for double chests of pickaxe shulkers from his close friend, Neo Paladin. In order to automate the project, Uplux's other close friend, Decker, was able to program remotely controllable bots onto a proxy that ran on virtual private servers. To make this possible, the group needed three Linux-based virtual private servers since 2B2T only allows three accounts to be logged in per IP address. With three virtual private servers running three instances of Decker's Q proxy and bot each, the group had nine fully proxied and automated bots up and running, and once Ooplex invited 20 trusted players, the group was ready to take out some logos and officially name it Operation Vacuum. The project started on the start of David Obsidian logo. The AFK method they used to break the Obsidian was through a program called Baritone, but it had some quirks. Baritone was not made for mining obsidian at Y level 256, and so a glitch occurred where floating blocks would be left instead of the logos being entirely taken out. This would actually help the group as they quickly realized that removing every single piece of obsidian was time consuming and wouldn't be completed for the time frame they were looking at, so they settled for simply making the logo unrecognizable. 12 accounts were being managed by the players Decker, Oofplux, and Sox. Once the Star of David was complete, the group would move to the Seatbelt Obsidian logo. After the Seatbelt logo was finished, they moved on to the Venzi logo. When the Venzi logo was complete, they went on to their toughest challenge, the Imperial Dragon logo. Since this logo was so big, the group decided the best strategy was to remove the distinctive features that made it a dragon. Once this was complete, it was around this time Oofplux became aware of my project. Since the 10,000 by 10,000 obsidian roof would cover up their project, Ooplex would message me on Discord. He explained to me their project and their ultimate objective, which was to add a huge obsidian X over the Spawn Mason's logo. I thought this was a cool idea and told him that both projects have a similar goal. I suggested that both projects should work together so we could cover the entirety of the 10,000 by 10,000 region in obsidian and create a border around the X. However, Oofplux was against this idea, saying that the project wasn't feasible and burnout would be likely. This is true if you look at other spawn projects. Many players became exhausted when placing obsidian during the construction of Link's Sky, which is a large 2048 obsidian radius above spawn. It also took them nearly 6 months to complete. However, if you look at the massive Spawn Masons logo, with the help of bots, the Spawn Masons were able to complete their massive Spawn logo in only 8 days. If our project is able to get a developer and also a massive amount of players, I wouldn't doubt that a massive 10,000 by 10,000 obsidian roof could be finished in a month or two. We would discuss the logistics as we explained this to Oofplux's group and ultimately decided to hold off on commencing our project until Oofplux's was finished. After about a week, I made the decision to stream placing Obsidian while attempting to remain in an area where Operation Vacuum didn't start. Things were going relatively well until a player named Mothra appeared. Mothra, a member of the Spawn Masons, decided to attack. After more Spawn Masons began to appear, I would begin to fly away from the region, which would bring me to where Operation Vacuum was. On stream you can see the spaced out Obsidian, which is part of the Vacuum. This raised many questions in the chat, and Oofplex would make an effort to get my attention. Slowly, the project started to leak, which caused members of Operation Vacuum to try to assassinate me. Once I saw the messages, I tried to get out of the region as soon as possible, and after the stream, an agreement was made between the two projects. While Operation Vacuum was being constructed, my project would remain inside a region in the Spawn Mason's logo. Numerous players developed suspicions about Operation Vacuum's activities and were able to figure out what they were up to. However, Oofplex was able to de-escalate these issues by using some gaslighting. While Operation Vacuum was in the works, my stream caused many players to join Conquest. The stream also caused an anti-Conquest Discord to emerge. Since our region had linked Sky and a few smaller logos to assist us, placing looked relatively easy, 
Players mostly started at the very top of the region, and in a few days, the top region was completed. A player named Quaz would create an obsidian break station so that players could just use obsidian shulkers and make placement faster. Cody Smile 11 and I would start at the bottom region, and after hours of placing, we were around a quarter from the Link Sky region. As more and more progress was occurring, more players started to get motivated. As logos began to be filled in, Operation Vacuum was close to being finished. On July 11th, 2022, after mining out 9 million obsidian, Operation Vacuum was completed after 22 days of work. This allowed Conquest members to go outside the region. More break stations would be constructed, allowing players to mine more obsidian and to distribute obsidian shulkers to members. This made placement even faster, and progress was going smoothly. However, as a few days passed, another obstacle will get in the way. As soon as we were getting low on our first batch of Obsidian, Microsoft shut down unmigrated accounts. When I messaged Redstoner if he could give us the next batch of Obsidian, he replied that we would have to wait 18 days until the next batch. This would slow progress down, as we had to ask other players for Obsidian for the time being. But progress still continued. Obsidian was mined from Ender Chest and placed in shulkers by players like Mad King Lambo, allowing a player named 6WJ to place 250,000 obsidian in just three days. If one player can fill in this region in just a few days, imagine several players filling in obsidian over a course of a month. And this is where you can help. In order for this project to work, we need as many players as possible. By no means will placing 100 million obsidian be easy, but if we can get enough players, it can be done quickly. If you want to help supply, place, or even develop a bot, join the Discord link on the screen, or you can also find it in the description. If this project is successful, it will be one of the largest structures on 2B2T and will stay on the server for a very long time.